Welcome everybody. Another artist talk, um, and we have uh, two fantastic painters, um, Richard Kitson and Luke Thompson, and they're and they're talking about their work and current exhibition, New Traditions. Um, I'll just read um, the uh, beautifully written um, sort of uh, the official blurb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Richard Kitson and Luke Thompson are two artists whose work is primarily concerned with, but not exclusively, to portraiture. Um, though both artists work within the same field, their approaches and styles differ, and this exhibition brings together their work for the first time. Um, Kitson and Thompson first formed a friendship through their work as painting tutors, and uh, both becoming aware of each other as Yorkshire-based portrait artists. After initial meeting, they began to share ideas and experiences about painting and in a short space of time their conversations naturally led to the idea of exhibiting their work together, which is, which is great for me because they, they, they asked to show here. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Um, so um, I've got some sort of uh, meandering questions, but I think if, if anybody feels free to interject and ask any or save them for the end, uh, well, we can just... We're going for an informal approach. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so just, just the first question as a kind of introduction question for, e for both of you about um, uh, your, your, well, no, how did you get started into painting? What was, what was the, uh, the prime mover into you, into you uh, becoming, pe becoming painters? And, and uh, I mean, go f far back as you like, or is. It's a lot further for me. <laughs> 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 Um, well, I always loved, like, when I was a kid, drawing faces off, like, magazine covers, game covers and that kind of thing. One of the first memories is, like, you know, those extra sketches and that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. But when I, when I went to do GCSE, I, I wanted to, you know, explore drawing further and really learn to be able to do it. Um, but it, I, didn't, I didn't feel like it was an opportunity that was possible. Um, I feel like the education around that at the time, I don't know if that's apparent now, or, you know, um, it was just a, a sort of, you know, aspect of the time, but it, I was kind of pushed down a different different route and I just wasn't really taken seriously in terms of wanting to be a realistic or um, a representational artist. So my um, my art teacher um, told me that probably a level art wasn't for me, so then I just kind of put it to one side for about four or five years. I went up to uni and did something completely different, that sort of history, tried to become a musician. Um, and then when that failed, I, uh, I went to a live drawing class with a, with a friend and then rediscovered my uh, passion for it. Uh, and then having a sort of fresh, fresh eye and fresh mind, I was like, right, I'm just going to you know, do what I can to try and follow that love for it. Kind of like, it was kind of like rediscovering something that um, I'd forgotten. Um, so I bought all the books I could find on, on, on drawing and just went from the basics again, the fundamentals, and tried to get good at uh, yeah, drawing first and, and foremost um, and then it kind of went from there I went and did other workshops around Leeds and um, Wakefield and, and tried to find as many sort of um, things happening within the community as possible um, and so about I'm going to try and probably cut down work and um, went, went, went part time quit the masters I was doing I was doing social history masters dropped out of that got a part time job and then just kind of tried to build it up as much as I could um, then when I discovered the, the style that I wanted to fall down, I went and went to Florence for, for about a month or so um, and tried to um, kind of um, absorb as much history and, and you know, and, uh, ideas around the style of painting that I wanted to explore. Good spot to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, met loads of great people out there um, and that inspired me even further. And, and, and that was it really, I got my, got my studio when I, when I came back, started to work from life a little bit more, um, met, other, met other painters, did a few workshops myself, which is how I met, met Richard as well, as, as Jeff said in the blurb, and took it from there really, so it's kind of not a conventional way in terms of education, but um, it, it's, it's kind of worked well for me because I've been able to just go with intuition more so than, than anything else now. Well, you mentioned going back as far as you want. Oh, yeah. uh, my mother assures me um, 
that the best way to shut me up as a toddler was to plonk me on the floor with a big piece of paper Brilliant. and some pens and I would scribble away for hours. Uh, I can't remember that. Uh, <laughs> but I can't believe that happened. Uh, I think mine came from being rubbish at everything else. Um, like, I grew up in a, uh, a working class area in Barnsley where if you didn't play football and you weren't interested in football, then you were just... Yeah. They said cancelled nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of... I was more into creative things. And um, uh, my school reports all said um, if there was a GCSE in staring out the window, we could have get an A-star easily. Um, terrible at maths, but I always liked drawing. Um, but I didn't try to become better at drawing until a friend of mine who lived up my street, so it's very petty, uh, he did a really good homework drawing uh, and everyone at school were going mad about it, I was brilliant, you know, and, uh, and I was overcome with jealousy, I'd never felt this feeling before, I thought, that must be nice, being told you're good at something, um, so I remember going off and then really trying then to get better at drawing and, and eventually, um, I, think, I think for a lot of people drawing becomes something they leave behind or whatever, it's something you do as a kid and some people continue it and um, it just it, it became a kind of obsession it just became something that I really wanted I wanted to be good at it I wasn't naturally good at it but I wanted to get better at it um, and then did my GCSE art um, went to Barnsley College and then joined a punk band which is not the most conducive thing in terms of getting a good education so I'd be walking off to me my A-level classes and my bandmates would shout me from what they were doing and say do you want to come play guitar or have to do English guitar, let's do guitar. Um, so I used to that. So eventually I left uh, Bowser College and I went to um, uh, Penniston Sixth Form where there's, there's a teacher called Lambert Paik who was only about four foot eleven but savage. And uh, you would not mess with her. And she, she said to me, you've got some natural ability but you've got no discipline whatsoever. Uh, which is fair enough. And um, certainly at the time. And she taught me... Um, a lot of academic drawing skills and things like that. She made me measure everything. She encouraged me to work from observation and things like that. And really opened my eyes up to a different way of thinking and working. Um, then did Art Foundation, when I met Joanne at the back. Um, you were doing Art Foundation as well. Uh, a very, I, I have to say you're a very good animal artist, aren't you dear? And you must admit it. Um, so she's always shouting at me for being too modest. So. Um, and then eventually I, I went to university uh, in Leeds, University of Leeds, uh, when everything was sort of conceptual um, and I was regarded pretty much as a dinosaur. Um, my tutor once called me a Sunday painter, which apparently was meant to be an insult, you know. Oh, well, I do paint on Sundays sometimes, you know, whatever. Um, and when I left uni, uh, I did paint for two years. Uh, I was that kind of discouraged. You know that feeling when you did your GCSE. Yeah, it's you similar. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 exactly. uh, so I thought, oh, that must be it. And like Luke, I actually pursued music quite seriously for, for quite a long time. Um, and I realised eventually that I don't look like Harry Styles. I'm more, I look more like Barry Styles from Barnsley Work Events Club, you know. Um, <laughs> so I kind of knocked that on head as well and just did that for fun. And then eventually I picked it up um, and then and once I started again in 2008, I never stopped. It, it came back and I started doing it because I wanted to do it again. Um, so I did, I did learn a lot at, at uni, but I, I mainly learned that if, you, if you're going to be a painter, you've got to really believe in what you're doing and kind of put, what, put the negativity of what people come out with to one side and you've got to have your, your own, you've got to be very self-motivated and things like that. And then eventually I stumbled into teaching and did that for 10 years. Uh, and built up a body of work over that time, which is quite difficult when you when you when you're teaching sixteen year olds full time. Um, and then, like Luke, um, a kind of window opened for me to uh, become a full time artist. I thought, well, I turned forty. That was the main thing. I thought, well, if I'm not doing it now, I probably never will. Um, and I really admired that Luke had made that decision probably twelve years before I did. You know, I thought oh, that were really brave. So, so it's your fault. Um, <laughs> So, and that's kind of where I am now. So I've gone from, I think I'm much taller actually, <laughs> from, you know, from there to there. This is really interesting stuff, that's great. Um, so I guess my, ne- my next um, question, it kind of feeds into some of the 
things you both talked about there is um, so you've got this journey into into how you've built your careers and making the art and, and I think Luke touched on it a bit um, sort of how, how, how did you um, find your um, or, or, or could you talk a bit about um, your style in painting because people you know people don't, you're talking about uh, art schools and stuff people don't often talk about um, uh, formalist sort of problems with painting it's all about concepts and you and you go and you want, maybe you want to talk about um, you know the well, you know composition or, or how paintings are made or, or you know this idea of um, of style is, is sort of old hat isn't it? it's not really talked about in um, yeah, um, yeah. in a particular way so how did how, uh, what informed because um, because it's quite you know having two artists um, uh, exhibition uh, exhibiting next to each other like Jonathan and Phil's exhibition in the last show you, you, you sort of look at style you know what, what you know what is what's what's happening uh, and, and you know there's strong contrasting elements so yes yeah, yeah. what what um what do you think fed into the style what, what style of painting and or, or, or generally what's your sort of uh, thoughts on the concept of style oh I'll just start a little, I think it's... a waffling question. No, no, no it's, it's a hard question to ask, though. Because yeah. it's that... I've, I've, I've talked about I've talked about this to Joanne as well, and, and a lot of other people, is how how do you arrive at a style? Maybe it's innate. Know? Is it something that you, you just, you, you know, you, you make work in that way? I think probably with your influences. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, did you do a lot of artist copies and that kind of oh, thing? Copies. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, like Josh just said though, it's, it's a very intuitive thing. It's, I, it's like I didn't decide I wanted to paint in a certain style. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt the same. It's more like trying to be able to represent what I was seeing or feeling first accurately. And then hopefully the style would come secondary to that, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you start with mechanics. Yeah. Can I actually draw a thing and make it look like a thing? If that's what you want him to do, you know, you'll or you might want to distort it or go down an abstract route or whatever. Mm. I always just try to, can, can I draw a plant and make it look like a plant? You know, is that even possible? Um, so I, I did a lot of that. Um, I also think it probably comes from your perspective, you know. Um, again, again, I'm going to find this difficult to articulate, that maybe, maybe your upbringing has an influence on your aesthetic, mm. you know, outlook or your approach, you know. Yeah, some, some, I was talking about this the other day in terms of the environment that you know you brought up in I think because I, I was kind of from like an old mining village um, but it's also very idyllic in terms of the surroundings and I always go back to that as a romantic view and I'd be wanting to catch that one day where there's maybe someone that grows up within a city or urban area might find that beautiful as well and I think you know it, it, I, I, I don't know if that's kind of... But I could, I could interject this, I grew up in a, a mining village as well, mm. but I did grow up with a romantic view. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's slightly more brutal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but why? I don't know. Yeah. yeah maybe, it's just, maybe it's just what I enjoy, mm. you know. Ooh, wrinkles, let's do yeah. you know. Um, and maybe, maybe I just got used to them kind of faces when I was growing up, you know, sort of. Um, I've, I've had a bit of a hybrid between Sheffield and Barnsley, you see, so steel workers and mines, you know. Um, but it's kind of a question that's. I, th I think if we get more questions from people later on, maybe we'll get maybe we'll get close to that later. But yeah. People struggle straight away. <laughs> we'll have to think about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you start to think. Do you think? Do you think that the, 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 you, the, there may be a journey? You, you, the, the, the style may change. Do you think? Because, because um, uh, I see particularly your Richard. You see, there's, there's maybe a, a, a you know some, some of the some of the, the uh, compositions of the figures. There's a, like a, a, a Freud uh, yeah. feel, um, and, well, he, and he and he, he his style changed dramatically, didn't yeah. it? From um, from quite successful artists with this sort of stylized look to 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 thick paint to almost yeah. abstracted figures. Well, this is probably going to come up like who are your influences? And yeah. Like that. But I think stylistically, I think when you land on an artist who really um, gives you that jolt, you know. So uh, when I was when I first started painting, I, I had no aspirations of being a portrait painter. I wanted to be a landscape painter. And my my granddad and my mum and dad wanted me to paint pretty watercolors, which I still do every now and again. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but as soon as I started 
um, paint, well, drawing portraits initially, because I don't think, I don't think you, I don't, I'm not sure if you can, you can learn how to get better at painting portraits. But I, I did, a, I did a portrait, and somebody said, oh, me, me GCSE teacher said you might be a portrait artist, not a, and that would be it, you know. Like, why would they say that, you know? So maybe you discover you've got a knack for it. I don't, I, I don't know. But, but my main influences back then were uh, probably Turner and Constable and Monet, people like that, the impressionists. Um, but as soon as I started paint, getting into portraiture, I started looking at Anthony Van Dyck and Rubens and Rembrandt, all the old, and Vermeer. And then as soon as I saw Freud's work, that, and, and I'm one of many portrait artists who, I don't know, I know you like his stuff as well, but you like his stuff, but I wouldn't say your work's Freudy. So why did, why did I go down that? And maybe, maybe it's just that, fact that he had this very piercing gaze mm -hmm. and maybe it's that that fired the imagination more than anything. But it's a, I mean, it's a subtle influence. It's like, it's not... It, it, it used to be a lot more obvious. Yeah. Um, I had quite a fried influence early on. Mm -hmm. I, think being, I think with him being probably one of the most prolific portrait and figurative painters of like the 20th century, is one you always looked at. And I, I kind of like um, wanted to paint like that quite opaque and mm -hmm. to begin with it seemed exciting, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then like, like say about styles change, you know, I found, you know, I, I kind of, I don't know, I, I get sort of excited by all different forms of painting and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, it kind of wanted to paint like this, wanted to paint like that, so it, it might come back around again when that's what I mean, what comes in, but. Yeah. Mm. You never know. Yeah. Interesting. I just, I, I mean, I, I remember when I did that one of the two lads, somebody said, oh, it's like a David Hockney, and I felt like I was making progress. <laughs> the first time somebody didn't say it looked like a Freud, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe that's, uh, you know. I mean, I mean, the, you know, the, 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 the sort of compositional as well, isn't it? The, you know, the, the, the figures posed in a, you know, the, 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 in a room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I guess... Um, Maybe I'll jump around with the question to this is sort of fits a bit. Um, so talking about the style, but that, now the sort of subject matter, um, I guess a lot of the time you, you're going to be working on um, commissions, but also, um, so, yeah, who, who or what, what, what do you look for in a, in a sitter, in, 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 in subjects? How, how, yeah, what, what's your, um, do, you, do you have an ideal? Do you like? Yeah, do you, do you like the sort of a, a, a challenge of a, of a yeah? What 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 do you what do you look for? Is there, is there anything you look for? Is My it? girlfriend is upset for me. <laughs> yeah, I think like three. There's like three of the same. <laughs> yeah, um, but they all look. Um, some of them are painted from life. Some of them aren't. Um, but I think there's a likeness captured in a different way. But they all look very different. I think you know. And I don't know if that's just. A difficulty in capturing my partner's likeness. I always find it harder to capture someone that I, I, I love or someone that's close to me in terms of a portrait, whereas somebody that's probably haven't got that attachment there. Uh, um, Is that why the one of me was so difficult? <laughs> 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 no, I do respect you, Robert. Yeah. There is? Um, there yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I It varies, I think. Oh, yeah, that, yeah well, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know, it varies from person to person as well, but I think even if someone's quite awkward or someone's quite shy about getting a portrait done, there's still something to be found in that as well. Mm. I don't think it has to be an elaborate, outgoing, you know, extrovert person. Um, I think some, someone who's a little bit probably more introverted and within themselves as well is quite interesting too. Um, it, it goes from, I'm, I'm influenced more by the individual and how they react and, and what and how I kind of feel about them rather than right, I need to, a person who looks like this yes. to fit something really and then they, they'll sort of they'll um, sort of navigate and communicate the painting from within themselves and, 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 your, and your process of creating the painting is, is forming the meaning and the yeah that, that... I, I mean I, I have got ideas of how I want paintings to look but like they just come within the people who I communicate with them. I mean, some people, you know, are walking through a crowd of people and are seeking out, you know, the craggy-faced, interesting person. You, you, know. you look at me? <laughs> 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 you know, they'll look at this person, you know, that's one way, I guess, you could, you could pick a subject, you know, all the good grief, they look, they look like they've, 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 they've lived or, <clears throat> or they're uniquely interesting. But then, but then um, you know, the, I guess that's 
brings a lot to begin with, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with Luke pretty much everything he said. I think early on when I started setting, trying to trying to be more professional with it. Uh, obviously, Joanne's been my main sitter since who we met in two thousand and two. You know, so poor Joanne's been, you know, and I'm sure Joanne will equate it to like washing pots you know, or any other kind of chore. You know, they're just like, oh, you know, sit down, blimey, you know, here we go again. Um, but with Joanne, there's that opportunity that I've, I've got work from when you, she was 18 all the way up to what I'm working on now and I'm not saying I want you, I know. Um, so, so that'll kind of carry on. So you'll get this sort of like record of someone, you know. Yes. And, and, and I, I love working from the same people, you know. That. Uh, Su- Susie's at the model here. Um, I've been working with Susie for a few years now and she always says, I'm getting bored yet. And I'm like, no, you know, because I, I do find it interesting working from the same people all the time. Because every time I see them, I find something new, you know. Um, you're recording their journey in a sense. But I think for the most part, it's just practical. You know, will someone turn up? Yeah. Um, is someone actually interested in doing this? Um, and on the occasions where, um, where people maybe haven't been as invested that's when I've struggled to do a portrait, you know. Not that I wanted to sit there and motivate me and say, you can do it, you can paint the best picture ever. Um, I just find that painting people I know I find quite fascinating because like, there is that relationship here and ultimately that's what you have to do. I think I struggle a bit more with commissions because often it's you, you don't get that contact with the person that regularly. But it's something I'm only just really going into. You've done it for a lot longer than me. You do you get commissions more regularly, um, but it's some, it's something I'm getting more of. But um, but yeah, I, I, I find I have to kind of call upon all of my experience to put something personal into yeah. into a commission. You know, so. and it, it, one of my favourite portrait painters, Sergeant. Um, I mean, it, you know, uh, Carnation the Lily Rose. I think, are these nieces or the the. the 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 beauty painted that those those girls with the the lanterns um cause, cause, yeah because he because he, he knew them he had a relationship with them mm-hmm. and then he did uh, I think he got commissioned to do some army portrait thing um and uh, it's it's absolutely awful painting <laughs> it, he just you can just see the, the 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 faces are just sort of shoved on the bodies mm-hmm. it's terrible he just didn't care you know it's really obvious yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. they're still greatly painted. But he's just like stuck on. Yeah, yeah it was, so it was just a job. Because you've got to, like, like I say, it doesn't want to just be a run of the mill thing, and mm. you know, painting's got to be exciting all the time. And yeah. Just makes me you, you want them to want, you know. Yeah. Not, but not to just be, because some people get embarrassed. I, I did a commission lately, the, the chap who I painted, he didn't want to be painted. It was, he had a big birthday for <laughs> no. but his wife were, oh, stop being a misery, get me, you know. <laughs> not, it's, it's for me as much as I was. He was like, oh. You know, and, um, so then you then you got you got a job on then because you're like come on you know um, <laughs> not that not that you're one of the sit there being eh, cheesy grin or not like that but you have to work a way around it and sort yeah. of inject some enthusiasm into it somehow so that's more that's more challenging. Yeah. It's good though you build up relationships then as well and once the person is like you know comfortable and then they're yeah. planting ideas and everyone's collaborating and it can end up being really really good fun as well. Yeah. I think you've just got to kind of put that extra effort into you know. Um, Make it an exciting yeah. thing and something that's fairly you you know fairly unique and, and different. Tea and biscuits are essential. <laughs> <Not all otherwise. laughs> yeah, <that's it>. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Smiling now. Aren't you? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, right, another kind of uh, technical question. Um, what what would um, what would you recommend? I guess for maybe. Um, Either, either somebody starting off making portraits, or just as a, as a, a, a general, basic um, way of working. What, what would you recommend as a, 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 or what is, or what is your palette for portrait painting? What, 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 what? Yeah, what palette do you do? do you, similar palette, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like a limited, limited palette. Mine, mine's just ivory black, Venetian red, yellow ochre, and titanium white. or flake white, you, you, you as well. Sometimes I like add cadmium red in there as well. 
um, if there's something more intensive that, that, that's needed. But I like to aim towards sort of earthy, earthy colours a little bit more. But, um, but, but why do you hate blue? <laughs> <laughs> We've not had an eye. No, we yeah, haven't. Yeah, I mean, but I just, I, when you told me, I'm like, not blue. <laughs> but this is, this is with, the, with the portrait stuff, with the sort of still life and landscapes, I do add, I do add a couple of extras, maybe ultramarine and a cadmium yellow. But with portraits, I always try and keep it quite earthy. And that's, I think that's coming through recently, because it, it's fairly a new, it's a, a fairly new palette that I've been adopting. But I've been enjoying that lack of colour in, in, a, in a way to still be... Um, representational without needing a wide colour range. I feel like you can almost mix infinite amounts of hues with those, you know, three base colours. And ivory black is a blue hue really when you mix it with white, so you still you still get that blueness from it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yours is similar but with the blues. And yeah, um, and like Blan, you know, I'm sure there's painters in the room, you buy your first pack of paints and there's all sorts of things in there. And you always have the ones left over that are nearly full. And you, so you, you're kind of cancelling out ones that you're not sort of using that much, which you might return to. But over the years, I've always had ultramarine blue, cadmium red, uh, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow pale, the sort of paler end of that. And for a long time, I'd used Kremnitz white, because Freud did, and I copied everything. Here. Um, which is illegal, you know. It's like, it's like Simpsons, lead paint, delicious yeah. and deadly. Um, <laughs> you give me some of that the other day. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, my brother found out, my brother's a scientist, and he found out we're using it. He says, you should be using this at all. <laughs> and, um, so it's not like a, it's not a well-ventilated room, my studio. Um, so, but it's very difficult to get now unless you're, you're a conservator, you know, doing that kind of work. But there was um, the, uh, uh, Pip Seymour, Wallace Seymour, he was talking to me that there was an attempt made to, to have it exempted. Um, mm. For art uh, yeah. to be made again, but I think um, I can't remember which way around. Somehow Brexit scuppered it all, or it was yeah. scuppered. Before. There was there was so, so, something to do with Brexit, or, yeah. or, or, or ironically, it wasn't Brexit. But you know, you yeah. can get there was an attempt made. I think I've got failed. two tins left of it, so I just have them as a shrine. <laughs> um, and um, you can get it, and if you can, it's extremely expensive. So so that we we both use the flake white hue, which is a which is a pretty good. Um, what's a, I guess, simulation of a yeah. lead white. I've, I've not used a lead white, so I don't know how the lead white differs, is it? Yeah. Is it? Basically, basically the, you know, we're going to boil you to tears. <laughs> um, when you, if you use titanium white and you add a red, yeah. uh, you actually have to add more red to get a kind of deep pink, shall we say. Mm. With uh, the lead white and the flame white, you, the, it, you'll get a deeper pink a lot quicker. You know, so it's not as opaque, basically. And it's a, little, a little bit more transparent. It's beautifully creamy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, slap it on your skull, some jam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> really don't. Um, that's bad advice. It does look like it does. Yeah, it does. It, uh, and it's a bit warm, isn't it? It's, it's, it's yeah. warm. It's warm. Oh, yeah. Pot of yeah. cream, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, you, you asked about starting off your portraiture. I think if you pinpoint... I, I'd try a few different styles first. Like that. Through my teaching work, uh, some, some, somebody wanted to do a, a Van Gogh portrait, so then I have to go off and try and do a Van Gogh portrait, just so that it's not awkward when they arrive and I say, I can't do it, I'm sorry. Um, uh, so I, I, I did a copy of a Van Gogh cell portrait, and I learned loads, it were actually, I did it slightly begrudgingly, but halfway into it, I'm like, this is, I'm really enjoying this, this is yeah. fun. And, and I think if you, if you do some artist copies, I, I, I also did a Rembrandt, I mean, you know, it's not, not much of a bar, is it, with your Rembrandt? Um, <laughs> And then, so I, I would kind of try a few different methods. Some people like the photorealistic route, you know, with the grid everything up, which I drive me mad. Um, but I think if stick to them basic principles, so you've got your egg, half your egg, so you've got them, them sort of measurements. Use that as a as a formula, but not as a rule, um, because obviously faces differ, the well, wider, longer, whatever. Um, and just be prepared for a long, long journey, because it probably took me a couple of years of portrait painting before I felt I had one that looked reasonably like whoever it was I was trying to paint, you know. Uh, and self-portraits, you know, um, I did loads of them when I was younger. And it's, you, you've always got your own face, you know, so get to know that and then everything else should fall into place. I mean, yeah. Over to Florence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, there's plenty of workshops around around here now, isn't there? Not a plug, but <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> just <laughs> the <laughs> But yeah, there's, there's you know fine communities of, of people, I'd say, and, and that, that love portraits as well, and you know you end up bouncing different ideas off each other, and you know you know I might adapt to the palette as well on another time and introduce different things, and you always find that if you kind of even just talking about it, you end up you end up trying something new, and um, you know going to going to group sessions where you kind of. I don't know, like I say, models aren't, aren't easy to come by and cheap as, uh, they're not cheap as well, so you can kind of get seven or eight of you where you can get with the costs and then you can, like we did yesterday, and you know, there's, there's all sorts going on, um, especially in Leeds and, and Wakefield as, as well, I think, and yeah, just finding, finding that little progress. That's it, yeah. Uh, yeah, talking about the models, but it's an interesting um, point with um, contemporary painting um, is and especially portraiture uh, or the figure is yeah is and how much the, uh, the photograph plays a, so many people make make paintings that um, that are from photographs or, or so, uh, intentionally reference the photograph um, and, and and you guys you know pointedly aren't doing that um, it's using them as a tool rather than as like the absolute truth, isn't it? I think yeah. like, I, I, I do a combination of working from life and from yeah. photograph, and yeah. I think the initial study from life, you 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 might absorb the the, the 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 flesh tones a little bit easier from a photograph. It dilutes and all that contrast, and you lose all the clarity. I find. I mean, but you, so, so both you guys' work is, is sort of rooted in this. You know. The, you're not using any devices that are sort of photographic, it, no. um, like I don't know something like Richter, where the, the, the whole thing is sort of yeah. it's portraiture, but it's like oh, this is this is a photograph. Yeah. I think he's making a point about that, that, yeah. that relationship between photography and painting. Um, during the, the first year of my degree, I, I attempted, I, I, I played with photorealism, and realised it wasn't a route I wanted to go down. So from the second year of my degree, I decided only to work from life. And I did that up until the pandemic. Um, and I would not use, and I refused to use photographs. I was very, you know, I had this idea and I was sticking to it. And then eventually I realized that my productivity started to dwindle. And, uh, and I think during the pandemic, I only did one, I did probably one self portrait. Uh, I did a couple of portraits of Joanne, because obviously I lived with Joanne so I could. And actually, the pandemic's forced me and to actually reintroduce photography as a reference. Yeah. But like yourself, use it to inform, not dictate, you yeah. know. Um, and actually, I find having worked from life for so many years, and that is still my preference and always will be, um, but I am finding now, going back to using photographs, um, if I have to and if I need to, that I'm not beholden to them as much as I used to be uh, when I was younger. Um, so, and again, I think that's come from you a little bit, you know, that, you know, seeing what you could achieve, you know, using, so now you, like, like, like myself, you do work from life, but you will, you, you didn't have that problem with photography that I had, whereas I had a real problem with people like Man City and Man U, yes. serious <laughs> beef. So idealistic, you know, you know yeah. Yeah. idealistic, yeah. yeah, that's a good word, I, like I was idealistic. Well, it's, well, it's, good, no, it's, good, idealistic. it's good to have these sort of rules, of, how many rules about you know, where you, what, what you want to achieve. You know, yeah. yeah. I think if, I, if, we, if, I, if we could be as productive without f photography, I would choose not to use photography. Yeah. I'm kind of using it reluctantly, I suppose. And, and I'm probably just, yeah, not, not um, stubborn enough or... Um, no, not, that's not true. That was the wrong word. <laughs> I'm always me. <laughs> no, I was... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I've just kind of given to it because you're it's right, there. You're right, though. It was stubborn. Yeah. Stubbornness as much as not else. You know, I this... What's the word? Is it like a rhetoric? It was like, I think it was a Freud thing and Frank Albach. Because he's the, 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 like the purists. Like, yeah, purists. But I think paintings yeah. purely from life are, are better than paintings that. Yeah. You I, can, I, I, in my, in my you can walk around people. And sort of, yeah. You see the face animated and it's not just click, all right, see you in six months, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then there's the old, like, like we were talking about the Vermeer thing, like how they use camera obscura. Yeah. Well, there, there's always been tools. I think um, Caravaggio so, used one. Yeah, so if you can use them, then why not? I suppose. Yeah, it's there if you need it. Yeah, is where I am at the minute. It's there if I need it. We have a we have a, a, a question from Instagram. Uh, Minu, 
with the lovely painter. Uh, she asks, any tips uh, for self-portraits um, with uh, angles or pose? Ooh, angles. Um, yeah. I think I've got to use a double mirror where, yeah, maybe setting that sort of angle up so you can kind of see yourself in profile. Um, I've never tried it from a painting perspective. I've, I've tried it from a drawing and found it extremely difficult, but that's quite interesting, I suppose, to get a different, um, a different yeah, perspective. And um, I, I, mean, I guess you've got the advantage now that you can get someone to take pictures of you. Yeah. But, but I, I, I quite like using mirrors. You've got you've got your your, your self portrait yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But I, I like using two mirrors as well. You know, I, I, it's the, I, I didn't bring it, but I have got a, a portrait that is side on completely. Basically, I look like a stamp. Um, so, um, and then there's another one that I did when I was younger. Um, I used the same method. So, you, and, and you can put them at angles as well, so you can look from, so you can have one one side. So, and you, and you could be looking at the angle that's from down low. So you look like a looming giant or something like that. <laughs> so it's, it's quite a fun. Just just mess around with mirrors, basically. Um, do, you, do you know that, uh, just to go back to Freud again, but do you know that... Him again. Him again. <laughs> um, that that, that self-portrait he did, um, I mean, it's Virgin on... Were there two kids in corner? No, we, we, no, there was one where, so he's, so you, you don't realise it at first, he's, he's at the canvas, but he's uh, about uh, two strides away from the, from the canvas. Oh, yeah, And he yeah. stood... And a woman is lying on the floor yeah, with her arms head. wrapped around his leg, yeah. and, and, you, and you sort of think, "All oh, right." But then you realise that he's done that from life, so he's untangled himself from her legs, yeah, from her arms, yeah. walked and <laughs> come back. <Yeah. laughs> what? I mean, yeah, what? That's a why make life easy for yourself? Yeah, yeah. R- ridiculous uh, self-portrait that one. I mean, it's, <laughs> so, yeah, so it says a lot, doesn't it? They should have that as an exhibition. The most ridiculous self portrait. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, they started off the RA exhibition with a self portrait drawing. Aha. Uh-huh. And it was beautiful. So as you went in, they had a, you know, small pieces. And his drawing of himself was just remarkable. Yeah. I think I, know, I, think I, I can picture the one you mean, yeah. Exhibition. Oh, there we go. So I guess it's a. Uh, we could. Um, which artist do you admire? <laughs> I wonder who. Actually, you've not said much about yours. So. Um, it does vary quite a lot, but I, I always edge towards um, Sergeant um, Rembrandt as well. Um, I think. One of the ones in Leeds that you showed me, I went to Leeds Art Gallery. Yeah, there's a Temptation of Percival in there, the, um, which, is, which is my favourite painting in, in, in that. I think but it's, that's leads to almost like a pre-Raphaelite kind of thing. And the pre-Raphaelite, I wouldn't say I'd, I'd, I'd take much influence from. It's, mm-hmm. it's the things that have like deep contrast. I suppose Caravaggio has that lot of, um, you know, um, chiaroscuro with strong light effects and, and deep shadows. Those sort of paintings um, in, inspire me quite quite a lot. I just I just love the atmosphere in, in them and the sort of, sort of um, yeah, the, the brooding sort of mood that that, that can capture um, and I think artists of, of those times um, would really able to do that excellently and I think it's just you know um, and they're quite and they're quite express you, 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 there's a lot of movement they're quite expressive yeah you you you, you have, you have a, quite a bit of movement in yeah, your well, strokes I think that comes from the, the sergeant stuff I think when I, when I did go to, to the Florence um, school for like you know the, for, for a short time they, they were obsessed with, with that they all they all um, worked side size so they'd have the model set up Next to the canvas, and they paint from a distance, so they and and they measure um, how it would kind of you know translate to there. But you was you were translating what you were seeing at, at the distance, so you were able to be expressive rather than getting up into the into the details early on. I mean, it's all it was all about capturing that um, expression with one one or two strokes, and, and I think it's that combination of the freedom of the brush with the um, you know the, the sort of more dramatic light effects, which is is the route that I've, I've kind of gone down. Um, Not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did a lot of that, you know, uh, for a while. But I, I find it really difficult to work like that. I can do it when I'm teaching. Mm. Um, but I've always got my lights on full blast when I'm working now. Yeah. For a while. So I guess I want to see more, you know. Yeah. Um, well, that's why it kind of it's nice contrast with the, the experience. Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, yours, you know, 
whether you intend to be not are, are extremely atmospheric. But I'm not sure I've got that going on. No, no, I've got a different kind of atmosphere. I'm yeah. Sure. You, 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 a the, more well lit atmosphere. Yeah. Um, so. Do you use artificial light? I mean, very strong light, because a lot of it is very um, heightened. Or do you heighten that in your practice? Um, yeah, I use artificial light in, in the studio purely because I don't have any natural light. Like, there's a very small window in the corner. Mm. Um, but if I could, if I had a room like this with natural light, I'd use, I'd use that um, to, to, to create more of a subtle effect. I think the artificial does have a very sort of intense, you know, um, contrast, which again could be a good or a bad thing depending on which way you look at it. I suppose Van Brown kind of would have worked at candlelight. Well. Yeah, yeah. So it would be really warm. Yeah. Um, so. so um, oh, yes. Um, I just wondered what you two felt about the AI art debate. Um, I wish you'd stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had this conversation yesterday yeah. enough because I saw something on Instagram where there's um, a, a page I follow called Art Life Works. I've got hundreds of thousands of followers and they posted the most brilliant um, contemporary realism on there and, and a lot of paintings that I look up to and a lot of painters, contemporary paintings that I look up to and want to get to that level. Um, but yesterday they painted, a, they, they, they posted three um, images of, a, of an artist who create something on AI, and the things were like, the, um, they looked unbelievable, you know, in terms of pre-Raphaelite sort of influence, there were these kind of really ethereal figures in a, in a sort of, you know, imagined landscape, but uh, it just kind of, it, it kind of disappointed me that they, they, they posted that, um, as it had been directed for organic, you know, painters, and, and it kind of scared me a little bit that maybe, you, you couldn't tell. You know, unless you were told, you, you, you couldn't tell. Um, but I think, I think the idea of it is, I, 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 I hope I never go down <laughs> the using AI. And I, it kind of, I don't know, I think it takes away that, um, what it means to be, a, to be a painter, I suppose. But there's nothing like, you know, just doing it. And I think you can't, a, a, a computer, we were saying, was taking influence from the painters of the past anyway, then that's already been done. It's just putting that together as one. And, and I guess... Quite often, that image will only ever exist as a digital image. Yeah. They would have to like create an equivalent of like a three D printer, but with paints and brushes, like hands that can actually recreate it as a painting. Yeah. Because you could only ever really print it up onto a canvas and varnish it to try and make it look like a painting. Um, but it's that idea of a uh, computer can only produce the information that that's gone into it. You mm -hmm. know. But is that the same for us? You know. Um, do we ever escape as influences and create something truly original? Yeah. What do you think about the, this idea that in order to create these art-producing AI softwares, the uh, machine learning thing has to sample lots and lots of artwork to learn how to do art? Um, and some people have said, well, they're stealing other artists' work, they're plagiarising. But is that what all artists do? You know. Well, that's all right. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Right. I mean, we all have to make a bit. Well, I've got to start somewhere. Mm. So that there'll always, I'm sure with my work, you know, however long I get to do it, there'll always be that thread of your influences and the little ideas that you, you pinch here and there. Um, whether it's obvious or subtle or, or whatever. Um, I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over AI. Mm. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, not well. At least not with the paint. I think painting's safe because it, yeah, it can yeah. do its own thing. It can. I, it can. I, I think, I think but everything the, else scares me it's, about it's, it. It's a bit of fun. Just <laughs> the way I look, I look at it. I just hope it like the contrast like, heightens what painting is worth. I suppose. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe the ob more. the objectness of it. Well, you know, and I, I, I imagine there come up come a time when people are like they get fed up with that and want something a bit more real anyway. So, but it's, I guess it's early days, isn't it? Is it not only the same debate people in the 19th century were having with photography? Yeah, but no, yeah. yeah. the same thing people would have been taking yeah. care of. So yeah, yeah. When yeah. photography oh. kill off painting. Yeah. yeah. Turner was really put off by photography as well, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But look what it did. Well, actually, photography made painting brought it to life. You know, think about what. There wasn't that need to make a painting that looked like the thing anymore. You know, and then I guess without photography, you wouldn't have abstract expressionism and all these other things that came in, you know, because people were free from having to make a, a realistic image. 
it's obviously come back round and you always got to get painters like me and you that do that kind of thing. Mm. But it's um, interesting in that the photography was actually a catalyst yeah. for art. Yeah. Mm. Maybe AI will be a catalyst for something that we will be art that we can't quite get our heads around. Yeah. Mm. Because I don't, yeah. We're only 23 years into this century. What's going to be the big thing? Because if you look at 20th century, things were more obvious, you know. Uh, the, for, the forms weren't, there yeah, was new forms. You, had, you, still we, had, you still had your isms, you know, these different things. We have all the forms now, don't we? You know, I'm not sure what the ism is at the minute, you know. So no, no, it's, it's, um, it's post postmodernism. Post isms. Um, yeah, that's what's <laughs> But yeah, I suppose having an optimistic view of it is maybe a good, good, good way of looking at it, I suppose. Yeah. Can I ask you, Richard, because you're the, well, you both have a very similar experience in higher education to what I have. But oh, yeah. Drawing, I, I used to draw cities as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I got the impression when you went to art college that there weren't bad canvases and that anyone who already had the skill of drawing all their life, you were a bit of an encumbrance, really. I mean, I. And I, I did exactly the same experience as you. I left art college and I actually went into photography mm. and ditched painting and art for nearly 10 years mm. because of the way I've been treated at art college. Yeah. And I thought, as a teacher yourself, when you're teaching 16 year olds, did you encourage them to sort of paint in a realistic way? Did you sort of say, like, you don't have to become sexual? No. Um. I tried my best within the sort of, I, I, I don't want to say restrictions, but the syllabus, the curriculum, all these kind of things, as long as they were hitting them targets, because it would be kind of mean of me to make everybody or expect people to work or want to do the same sorts of things as me. I, I had one kid making sculptures out of pebbles, you know, and all sorts of weird and I, I had I taught a lot of girls who wanted to do fashion and textiles, you know, so you just have to adapt, you know. So in that situation, I just have to say, look, I can't teach you how to sew. I can't sew myself. But we've got YouTube, you know, <laughs> or go and see so-and-so down in the textile department and you'll be able to. So it's just about finding avenues so that they could achieve their own thing, you know. Kind of in, in the first year, so you talk about A-levels. In, in, in the first year A-levels, I, I would, everyone would do life drawing. We do, we do drawing, observational drawing once a week, so just to build a portfolio, even if they felt they, they weren't very good, we'd often have this argument like, well, I don't like your drawings, I'd like to put them in your portfolio because they want to see a range of things. Then in the second year, they start to specialise a bit like a foundation course. Um, so I tried as much as possible within them sort of um, restrictions to, to let them do their own thing. Not easy when you've got 30 I've got kids. Sunday painting tag as well. Like yeah. It's like something to throw at you, you know, yeah. you're drawing something that people recognise. Yeah. You can see what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know it's, a, it's a very cool um, contemporary uh, gallery in London now, so it's called Sunday Painters. <laughs> They're very, very, yeah, very hip and cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's part ironic, part, part that shows some good painting. <laughs> Man, uh, Andrew Graham Dixon said it, uh, Royal Society of Portrait Painters this year, he says, if you want to be a rebel, be a painter. You know, the words to that effect, you know, painters are the rebels now. Because um, it's not seen as fashionable or you know so which I thought was quite nice but if he said it, it must be true yeah <laughs> he's been on telly now <laughs> yeah, can I ask another question of course um, I'm just looking at the two portraits there um, and my question is how do you know when you've finished because some people might say that the one Richard isn't finished that's a good question. Why don't you finish it? <laughs> <laughs> did, you run, did you run out of time? <laughs> um, I, I think that is a feature in your work, though, and I, I quite like the unfinished bits. But sorry, yeah, I just think there's like some sort of freshness to it as well. Um, at, at times, I kind of feel like it has a, like a spontaneous sort of loose feel, and that's sort of that's the idea of a finished painting. I mean, sometimes it's like not it doesn't have to be overly refined um, because I, I might capture a mood or a feeling within the expression of the person and feel like okay that's fine whereas if I've got to work things and then try to you know complete it as it as it as how it looks in terms of finishing the full canvas and then overworking the portrait I might lose the expression that I wanted to get 
Mm. Um, where I felt like after three, I did that on three sessions with Richard, and I felt like I captured personally whether it does or it doesn't. I, I felt like it captured the um, emotion in the portrait that I wanted to get. So then I just kind of thought I'd, I'd, I'd step away from it then before making it worse. <laughs> but I will add to that: in all the years that I've been painting, my mother has never fawned over a painting like she does with that one. She loves it. And I've done loads of self-portraits and I said, look mum, oh yeah, that'll be it. That's the entire response. She looked at that one, oh, oh, do you reckon you can get that off him? You know, <laughs> you know and I'm like, what do you know, 20 odd jumping years I've been doing this. Uh, and I think that's because I can't, I can't look at myself like that, you know. I can only ever do the warts and all sort of thing. Um, and I think you have captured something that I can't capture. Um, I, I call it I call it the portrait of a fisherman poet. Um, <laughs> so it's a fisherman who exactly. reads poetry at the weekend. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I think I think that's where you do have a natural ability to capture it, someone's someone's personality. Say so it's natural. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, but other times I'll, I will take the painting a lot further, and oh. it just. What was the original question? Sorry. When do you, how do you know when you're finished? finished? I think when I'm still fiddling and I'm making no difference. Mm. Um, I have a, I have this thing in me where I have to try, um, and I, I try to I try to make every, give everything the same value as everything else. Everything's even that blank grey back blind. Susie's leaning against. Um, I've even tried to observe the shadows and the different things in that. Um, the plant, the sort of, the floorboards even. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying I've done them successfully, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to observe each area. So I'm not saying the face is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with this one, uh, Rachel, she's covered in tattoos. I mean, there's several paintings within a painting that drove me absolutely wrong. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's interesting you, you said that because yeah, almost everything in your paintings has um, a similar treatment um, whereas in, 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 in Luke you're, you're sort of e uh, emphasising certain, certain elements uh, and then breaking apart the picture or, or, or uh, uh, other parts so there's this, yeah, this sort of, uh, push and pull of, of, um, of you know, the background or or um, or a, a fabric or something. That's a that's a that different device, isn't it? Nice. Why they wanted to do this? Yeah, because we learned from. I I I really you know admire Richard's sort of meticulousness in going in for the details and something mm. that I want to maybe you know really try and, and learn from and, and go in for a little bit more. And I think it's, it's the, when you're absorbing those different styles from different painters. I'm, really useful. I'm working on one of the minute as well, and I'm trying to be a little bit loose. <laughs> I'm not. I, I think I'm failing, but um, I am trying. So that's quite nice. There's that dialogue in there. Yeah. So yeah. Back and some pauses. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fascinating the, the the contrast in in uh, in methods. Um, right. Yes. Yeah, so we, we, we've uh, we've we've. Uh, we're getting close to the end, so I'll ask some um, um, last few couple of questions. Um, you talked a bit about your 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 getting into art and the other things you did you do. Um, so, uh, what what are the other things that in that outside of uh, painting that creep in in some way, or you know, if in, in, in inform the work or 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 uh, maybe maybe don't inform the work, but by that way inform it. Like I know you used to talk about the mu music or yeah things that aren't um, yeah. I've that... never been able to bring music and painting together. We've always been quite separate yeah. things. Or do you, do you, well do you work with the music playing or yeah 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 yeah, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. So, so, so maybe does that, yeah. Uh, tinnitus anyway, it's also drama. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, what what informs the work that isn't maybe other artists or what inspires but isn't. Pain, I, I, pain. I listen to music when I'm when I'm painting. I, I put um, instrumentals music on and, and sort of like you know or film film scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think sometimes that you know can subconsciously maybe um, influence the way you feel yeah. when you're painting, or it might kind of inspire a new work or something like that. Yeah. And when I when I first got into painting, being 
a musician as well. I, I found I found musicians interesting in life, and so I'd go and I'd paint other musicians, and so um, I suppose there is an aspect of it a bit in there. Um, or do you make do you make parallels to I don't know, maybe maybe uh, you're thinking that. that, that I'm painting this painting in a in a way that's similar to how I play the guitar, or um, I, I, does, do, do, you know does does your does your or, or taste in 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 other things? Do you, do you feel like there's a connection? Possibly, you said earlier about the sort of the purist sort of idea. I think I think, I think that's always in back in my mind. If I'm doing a landscape, you know, when we doing some plein air sort of landscape as well, I do like to go out and. Um, and when I, when I do landscapes outside, I, I try and make them as pleasurable as possible. I'm always near a pub, uh, <laughs> so you can commiserate or celebrate with a pint, <laughs> depending on how it goes. Um, so, so it's funny how the landscapes have, have kind of crept back in, having only painted portraits for a long time. But I, but I think doing the landscapes kind of... I've always probably got a portrait in the back of my mind even when I'm doing a landscape. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I can bring some of this more looser mark making into me, you know. And and you might notice it on the on the coat there, the, the green coats. You know, if you look at closely at some of the marks, they're similar to some of the clouds on that painting, you know. So maybe there is a little bit of that in it. Um, I think I'm probably too practical to think about this question in a deeper way. Yeah. You know, I'm just thinking about the problem of how, how do I go from a blank canvas to something that's reasonably passable, you know. As a, I think it's um, it, because on the landscape thing, or going out and doing the plein air stuff, it, it's it's only a fairly new thing for me. But I feel like they're starting to sort of um, influence a uh, 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 painting like the two here have, have been influenced just by going out and, and, mm -hmm. and painting the landscape, and then I might see how that could work with the figure in, in that, and how the the landscape might sort of um, describe how the person is feeling in the painting or yeah. something, you know, to try and bring the two together. Um, as far as that. Mm. Very good. Very good. Um, I guess we should do a final couple of questions. Oh, you think you go? I was going to ask you about the landscape painting, and you've, you've covered it. Genius. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what um, what uh, exhibitions or, or plans? Anything you want to plug in the future? What what uh, what are you up to? What's what's going on? Um, or what, what any uh, things you you hope to do? Well, yeah. we've got the, I've got the Yorkshire show and you've got the um, Patchings Art Fest. Where we're both doing the, yeah. I think we've got to do like an hour demo. Or yeah. So, <laughs> I'll do a one hour portrait demo. So I'll have to be really loose for that one. <laughs> so, oh, you, you, should, um, you, should, you should do, I don't know if people are familiar with Patchings, it's quite a unique, unique wonderful thing. You should yeah, yeah, I, tell I, them about it. I think it's basically the Glastonbury for artists. Yeah. So, so, um, so I think there's Patchings Art Centre, which is always there. And then for three days in the year, Joanne actually knows more about this than me. Um, I got asked if I wanted to do a demo um, on one of the days, which includes some exhibition space and. Um, so just, just outside Nottingham, isn't it? Just, yeah, just I think it's north, place. really north Nottingham kind of yeah. way. Um, yeah, so they have lots of like people. I think the Windsor and New and all the kind of um, what's the word, the material makers tend to go along and get people demoing their products and stuff. The marquee I mean, is more demoing. Um, subjects and techniques and all that kind of thing. So it's the art profile um, marquee. They do all sorts of courses and all, all sorts of things, don't they? It's yeah, yeah. So it's that kind the of thing. gazebos. So it should be should be fun, terrifying but fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing a masters this year. And that's no one knows that until well, Joan knows. So <laughs> yeah. that, I'm going back to school. Uh, I think because I had quite a negative experience at uni which wasn't all their fault and it wasn't all my fault, it was a bit of both. It was just a, it was just a bad time, um, which, we, which I've already touched upon. So I thought it might be quite, because having been a teacher for the past 12 years, I suppose now, um, I thought it'd be nice to go and be taught again, you know, run, run Shetlands up a little bit. And um, so that's my plan for this year. So I might I might disappear for a bit. And you and people will be like, Yay, he's gone. Um, <laughs> you'll be you'll be able to enter all the uh the uh the gra the uh, the fancy graduate um uh, uh exhibitions as well. You could be new contemporaries and all will that. I? Oh, oh yes, yeah. you could yeah, yeah. You can be emerging artist again. <laughs> That's it. I'm the primordial soup. Yeah. <laughs> Both, I think, well, um, That's another exhibition title. There you go. <laughs>
Yeah, well, we remember that, don't we? <laughs> well, we were absolutely dead on an hour. Um, let's carry on, let's just stay. So if, if anybody has any more, uh, any more questions, or... Um, yeah, we've... Uh, we've you're very good, though. Lots of questions as we went along. It's good. Good, well, well-behaved right. audience. Oh, okay. <laughs> Engaging and everything. Any bottles are out, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> Super. Any more questions on the internet? Come on, internet. <laughs> That's one of them uh, and teach programs, isn't it? Come on, internet. <laughs> yes. One more bid. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, you. Uh, oh, sorry, for doing it. Oh, yeah. Can you explain a bit more about the landscape? So, is there any more stuff about landscape? Uh, ooh. Uh, I guess from my side, I started off as a landscape painter mainly doing watercolours um, and then and once I started oil painting I neglected doing watercolours and mainly concentrated on developing my, my, my portraits and things like that um, for me with landscapes I, I always try and stick quite local to where I live um, I try not to, you know, I can't afford to go to you know, anywhere sort of glamorous and paint famous scenes and stuff. I, I, I always tend to refer back to Constable I really like Turner, but I love Constable. It does. And I like how you can go 150 miles in south, sort of east corner England, and every single Constable painting is kind of just in that little corner. So I quite like that idea. But I think doing landscapes, because we live in England and the weather's completely unpredictable, they give you that opportunity to, do, to kind of push yourself and think, right, I might only have an hour here before it starts raining. Um, so, so a lot of them, are, they're not massive, they're quite small. And they, they're quite immediate, and, um, and and they just offer me a bit of a, almost a bit of respite from doing portraits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find portraits, as much as I love doing them, they are quite draining. Um, and doing a landscape is just that opportunity to go out of me every day kind of thing, and um, and try and and try and I guess try and paint a little bit looser. You know, that's, that's that, I tend to use them for that more than I. Um, you, you, uh, we've got a uh, w- wonderful printmaker, uh, Maggie Thompson, has a, I think a question for you. Um, she says, how do you think returning to study might change your practice? I don't know. Well, see, we, we talked about this a bit, didn't we? Um, you were I, saying about narrative stuff. Yeah, I think one of the things I struggle with is, is, is the narrative element in a painting. Um, I, I try, I'm not a natural at creating a narrative. I try and let it develop naturally. If there is one, um, I think you're you're better than me at that in terms of creating an atmosphere and a story and intrigue and that, and that kind of thing. That's just that's just what I think. Uh, but I, I'm interested to see. I, I can't give myself permission to work outside of a comfort zone. I can teach other people how to do it, but I can't do it for myself. So I, I just feel like going into a into a university kind of setting again and working again and working with young artists because you know because they've got that you know, gung-ho, kind of like, they've got their whole careers and lives ahead of them. So I think that, I'm basically going to sap energy off of them. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's the plan, you know. They'll, they'll go home and then I'm really tired. Do you spend an hour with Richard? Yeah, ah, that's why. <laughs> and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're running and yeah. painting. Like the energy vampire of that programme. You know, Colin, some of the yeah. other, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm basically just going to walk around Leeds Arts Uni and do that. But yeah, I'm really interested to see like, who else I'll be working with and what. I, I imagine there'll be students who've gone straight from the degrees through to the MA programme, and then people like me who've had a significant break, you know. Where are you going to be doing that? Leeds Arts Uni. Yeah. So it was Leeds College of Art. And I'm, I'm going there because a lot of my ex-students have done their degrees there. And they all say it's really good. So. How are you going to um, refrain from teaching them, your peers? Don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to be really. I'm, I basically I'm going to make a nuisance of myself for an entire <laughs> year. That's my plan. Like, when do you leave, Richard? You know, uh, I don't know. They'll want some painting instruction. They'll be like, you'd. <laughs> I don't. I'd be interested if, if I, I, I would be more than happy to go into the undergrads sort of studios, and if they wanted me to go along and stick my nose in, I'm more than happy to do that. You know. So, but uh, there's a lot of unknowns. I have no idea quite what to expect. I just know it'll be difficult. Exciting times. Ooh. Remember to invite us to the uh, to the degree show. I will. Yeah. Whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Well, they've got a big gallery up there. Yeah. Very, very good. 
Super. I hope that covers that. Yeah. Any others? Were you going to talk about the landscape? Oh, yes, sorry, 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 interrupted. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's not uh, totally different from Richard's perspective on it, really. I'll, I'll just, I'll, you know, I've got a sharp box, I've got to do plain air stuff as a way of kind of freeing myself from the studio, if I'm getting a little bit stuck or I'm, uh, lack of ideas, I think out in nature, that's where the uh, inspiration is sometimes, or even just as a, as a pastime, as something that's less serious, you know. Um, but I, 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 I am wanting to explore landscapes a lot more, definitely, but at the minute it's more of a, a leisure kind of thing, really, and then it'll kind of influence more studio works down the line. Um, but, you know, like Richard said as well, and. Um, you, you don't need to go to somewhere that is um, touristy or, you know, to, to be able to capture something beautiful. You, you should be able to, I feel like you should be able to see it around you, you know, wherever you are, really. Um, and like, that's Lowry in his city, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, that'd be ugly to some people, but it was on his doorstep, mm -hmm. and that's what he did. You know? And even just doing cloudscapes, like, you know, Constable did, and, 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 and you know, there's, there's, there's always going to be something extremely different and fascinating each time. I think it's just looking for that, wherever you you are saying, but I, I just, there's just some nice areas near where I am, so it's, it's, it's quite good as well. Or you could be like George Shaw and do garages. <laughs> but I, I find landscapes harder than portraits, weirdly, I don't know. Um, I, like, I don't know if that's because we, we, we might naturally edge towards portraits more like your tutor said to you at that time as well, but I don't, I don't know what it is. It's, but, but equally fascinate me and capturing that sense of depth and atmosphere and, and um, mood is, is um I, I think it's amazing yeah. he's come from doing uh, landscape um, uh, teaching landscapes you know kind of encouraged me to go back mm -hmm. and do it you know because I, I, I be I use landscapes a lot as a, as a teaching method mm -hmm. and then as I'm doing I'm thinking I'm really enjoying this yeah. <laughs> I'm about just some more you know uh, I, I'm quite interested in mixing colours and and the order in which you mix colours to achieve. So, so if you've got a cerulean blue and a whimsy yellow, mm. or something like that, if you mix them, if you start with blue and add yellow, you get bluey yellow. If you start with yellow and add blue, you get a yellowy, no, green. <laughs> bluey green and a yellowy green, that's all I'm saying. Much easier to show you than that. <laughs> um, I quite like stuff like that, but I am very sad. Um, so. Do, do, you, do you paint landscapes? Yeah. Trying to. Ah. With oils or yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah no it is, it is difficult uh, from figurative to landscape. Mm. I was interested in figurative and then moving into landscape. Is, yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. But I think it's great because you can like like say you can free you up on the figurative mm. stuff. Mm. Um, but like going in for two hours when the light before the light changes and trying to capture that mm. moment is like you learn loads within those two hours because you're observing what what you're seeing and. and Got to capture that particular moment. That's funny because I set myself that limit as well. Yeah. Because with these, I can go on forever. Yeah. The landscape is there for two hours. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Mm. The pub's calling, you see. The pub's calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, next one. How do you know when you finish a landscape? I said it's when my legs are hurting, I need a week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just bring the tone down. No, we saw that. That's great. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I, I'll try and move the chairs to the corner as well if everybody wants to have a better look at the pictures. My new postcard hats are there. Only feet down 50 per pack. Cheers, Josh. No problem, no problem, no problem. And if anyone's got questions that were too shy to ask you from the river.